Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this light up Halloween haunted house tumbler. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. If you like this video and want to see future crafting tutorials, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you see all upcoming videos. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. To start off this design, I spray painted my 3D printed haunted house from Kimi Page Boutique. Now all of these come gray now, so you don't have to do this step unless you wanted to go in a totally different color direction, but don't be afraid to spray paint them. It's super easy. Just take your time and just do kind of light little mist across it because you don't want any of the pooling of the paint in any of the details. So it was really windy this day, but I just put um, the house on a tumbler insert um, on the Kimi Page cup cradle and it worked wonders and then just put a piece of wax paper over the top of it. But you can see I'm just kind of lightly misting the house, just kind of laying down that color. Um, and I should have done two coats. I only did one to kind of speed up the process, but you can do whatever you need to. I let that dry for a couple of hours and then I just got some um, just folk art or just regular craft paints and a chip brush. So a chip brush is this kind of, um, I don't know how to explain it, just a wiry almost paintbrush. And I got like the littlest bit of paint on the bristles. So I would get just a little bit on and I'm sorry I'm out of frame when I'm doing this. But then I just lightly take the brush very quickly back and forth. And what this does is it lays down this black paint kind of on the siding that you can see there and along the edges. And that's how I really wanted to distress this house. So what I like to do is at first I kind of dab the paint where I want it, just like you see there. And then I will go back and forth and it removes any of the excess, but just kind of lays it down where we want it. So um, I just kind of took my time, went back and forth. And then in the corners, I got a little bit of a smaller brush that you can see here. And then I just put, painted it on in the colors and then came back with the chip brush. And you can see it removes any of that excess and just kind of distresses the haunted house. Now, if you wanted to, you could glitter the whole haunted house. I just wanted to leave the gray color, make it kind of spooky looking. So the whole design of this isn't perfect. So even when we go to apply the glitter here in a little bit, um, I just kind of wanted it to highlight some of the details. I didn't want very crisp lines or anything like that because this is supposed to be a almost condemned haunted house that really just gives you all the spooky vibes that you could possibly want, so. So I went around and I added that distressing, like the black paint around all the sides where the siding was on the house because they're siding on the sides, obviously. <laughs> I know it's kind of redundant, but I'm just pointing that out. But then once that was done and the paint dries super fast, so it's not like you had to really um, wait a long time, but I'm just taking Mod Podge and I am painting kind of, and I know there's a, probably a better term for them, but um, I'm just gonna call it the outline of the roof on the front. So um, <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm not very architecturally savvy, but I'm just coming in with a little bit of Mod Podge and the glitter I'm using, it is evergreen from Peachy Olive Glitters. And I'm just highlighting just a couple of the different sections. So I did the top roof, so you can see I did the two um, arches, no, they're not arches triangle sections on the left and then both of the sides. And then I really like these kind of micro tip little um, Q-tips so much, almost, and I'll list them down in the description below, but it really helps to kind of clean up any of the places that you accidentally get Mod Podge that you don't necessarily want glitter on. Um, but I'm just coming in, I added the Mod Podge around the door, and now I'm just coming in with the windows, and again, I have that micro tip kind of Q-tip on the side. Um, and I'm just kind of sparingly adding glitter, because again, we don't want it perfect. Um, that's not what we are going for, but we're just kind of adding it here and there, um, just to make sure that we're getting the glitter Glitter on the windows. Now you could skip this step. You don't have to glitter the house at all. If you did just want it to be spooky, you could do a completely different color scheme, but I really wanted to keep it kind of this traditional, um, like the typical colors that you see for Halloween. So um, we'll be using orange and purple here in a second. And I thought it really just kind of helped to bring the whole look of this haunted house to life. 
Once I was happy with the green and I had not brushed off the green glitter here, so I wanted to kind of call it out as to why it kind of looks a little messy here. But I just am using my micro tip Q-tip here um, with some Mod Podge just to kind of get into those sections. And then I'm gonna come in for like the wider areas with my paintbrush. And then we're going to be using Panem, which is a totally underutilized, beautiful orange glitter. So I'm gonna do it on the door and then I'm going to do it on the other section of the roof that has not been completed yet, just because I wanted just to add a little bit of orange but not overpower the whole thing um, and I think it added just that little nice pop that we were going for so here the door is all done and then I'm just going to hit this section of the roof and then I know the next sec like the next part of this is going to be kind of confusing but I did do the bats that I'm going to show you on a different cup but I promise I use the same bats on this tumbler so look how pretty that orange is I love it so here's what we're talking about so these bats they're called um, mini tumbler charms and they are printed we print them here in house and again I was doing this <laughs> struggling a little bit but you're going to heat the bats up so they come perfectly flat and then I move them and push them down on the cup so I know that was kind of fast but all you're gonna do is just heat them up with a heat gun um, or you can get really hot water I think that's a little bit easier and it's easier on your fingers too so you just drop them in there and then put them onto the tumbler and then mold it around the tumbler once they're kind of molded I do pull them up when they're not as hot and then kind of over bend them a little bit so that way they really keep their shape and I hope that makes sense and I can do another tutorial if you guys need to just drop a comment down below and I can create a more in-depth tumbler for our in-depth tutorial for the tumbler charms so after the bats are molded to the cup and we have a ton of different tumbler charms these are just some of the Halloween ones but um, we have a bunch of Christmas ones that just launched um, I put use painters tape in a little piece of cardboard I actually learned this um, hack from Andrea who's a friend of mine with OMG tumblers and tees um, but I just put them on a piece of cardboard with a little bit of painters tape and it helps me to move them around to get all different sides of the bat coated with glitter so again I'm just using Mod Podge you can use any adhesive that you want and then I am using gentleman this is a really pretty hollow graphic and black um, glitter and honestly I don't know 100% that it's holographic but it looks like it um, it's called gentleman from peachy olive glitters I've used this black a lot recently um, but I'm just making sure to coat the bats and you get that nice little pretty kind of sheen to it um, I let those dry for about an hour and then I spray seal them twice with rust-oleum clear gloss spray paint and now I am moving in to prepping my tumbler while those are drying so I'm just using a 60 grit sanding block, hitting down maybe anything left over from production, but this is a 30 ounce straight skinny from Hog Outfitters or the Stainless Depot. Sand it down, then spray it with some alcohol and wipe any of the excess off. And then what we're going to do is apply our battery pack. So this is, comes from Cami Page Boutique. Um, I will list it down in the description below. And this is where we're going to hide the battery pack for our LEDs that we're going to be adding to this cup. So. Um, this is sized specifically for the 30 ounce straight skinny. Um, we have a bunch of different sizes for whatever tumbler you're working on. But I like to sand down the edges just to make sure that they're as smooth as possible. And this is the same 60 grit sanding block that I was using on the tumbler. Granted, you probably shouldn't sand it over the tumbler you just cleaned, but I wipe it down anyway. But I just use some Loctite um, super glue. I really like this stuff. It's just like a gel super glue so it stays in place and it's really, really adhesive. Um, and then I'm going to glue the battery pack down on my cup. So you can see there that this is the open spot down and you're going to want to make sure that the hole is pointing up. So you can see it there. So that way we can run the lights through that little hole um, that you see. So I'm gonna do that. I let that dry. And then we're going to come in with the painter's tape. Now, you don't have to do this step. This is just what I like to do to hide that seam a little bit. Um, these cups are really, really, or the battery packs are really sized to the tumblers. So you're going to have a seamless um, kind of spot if you fill this, but I just like to use this kind of as a bridge. So I'm just using painter's tape to bridge that gap, and then I'm going to take it out and spray paint it. So I use this fiery orange and just gloss black, and I'm going to do an ombre spray paint over the tape and the battery pack like you see here. Once that's dry, I mix up probably about 10 milliliters of um, Artistry's one-to-one -one fast sets, and I'm just doing 
a super, super thin coat over um, the surface of the entire tumbler. So um, I'm just going to make sure that I've got it nice and evenly painted. But I do wanna preface this, I did take off the bottom of my battery pack because we don't want to epoxy the bottom of the battery pack to our tumbler. So um, I'm just going to apply a nice even coat over this and you do want to pay, uh, tape off the bottom of your battery pack. I did not do this and I had to clean it up later. So I do wanna add kind of a little bit of caution there. Here I'm coming in with Deborah. Um, I know you can really see the container well, but this is a really pretty kind of orange yellow. Um, this is from Peachy Olive Glitters. And I'm just kind of laying this down at the section where the orange and black paint mix. Um, the reason why I like it there is because this has got an opal aspect to it. So it's going to kind of look like a natural ombre anyway, just because this is going to be playing really nicely over the two cups. So you can kind of see there that there's already a nice kind of um, color differentiation just from the paint. Then once that's done, and again, you can see a really great shot of the glitter container, I'm coming in with p &M, and I'm holding the cup down at a 45 degree angle, just like that, and I'm starting to blend this into the Deborah or the yellow glitter there, just to kind of start that ombre between the two colors. So I hold it down at a 45 degree angle, and then I'm gonna go up at a 45 degree angle so that we can start to blend the other colors into the glitter that we've already laid down. Now you just wanna kind of lightly sprinkle so that way you have enough um, if you need to to go back and forth with um, all of your glitter colors so we're just kind of laying our roadmap right now if that makes sense so just making sure that you're blending it into the Deborah and then um, we're gonna come in with another color for the top for our spooky sky, or sky, I guess I should say, this is Mega. This is also from Peachy Olive Glitters. I liked this because it was an orange, but it also brought a little bit of the yellow tone into that top section of the sky. So I just did Mega. I don't know why it cut off right there, but I just finished the Mega, blending it into the Pen M. And then it was time for Derby. So this is a really, really cool, um, I would say Halloween-y black-purple mix. So um, it just got a little bit of a holographic part to it but I just thought it would be fun and a way to make the haunted house pop over a darker base without going just straight black so this is derby so at first I just kind of blend it into the Deborah that we laid down and then I'm going to come in with Lestrange so all the glitter that we're using is from peachy olive glitters and then I'm going to go over the top of the derby with Lestrange to kind of blend those together and then also mix them into the yellow glitter that you see there so just kind of coming in like that and then just to kind of make it um, a little less seamless I'm going to hold Lestrange down and blend it into the bottom of the cup. And then we're going to finish off the entire bottom with Gentleman, which is the uh, glitter that we also used on the bats. So you can see there, again, kind of going over everything since this is a super fine and just kind of pulling the whole look together, blending it into that yellow to give us that nice spooky sky or the transition into the sky. Um, and you can kind of see how nicely that turned out. Um, I went in with two coats of epoxy. I did use Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set um, and because I did not tape this off um, like I had mentioned I'm just coming in with my exacto knife it comes right off um, the epoxy off of the little peg that you see here um, but I do recommend um, taping this off before you go into your epoxy layers from the beginning. So here's really where you can see where I should have taped off my battery pack. So what you should do is just lay um, the tape flat on the battery pack bottom so just like tape it down onto it and then use your X-Acto knife and just kind of cut off any of the excess. So it prevents you from having to do this step. It does come off pretty easy, especially if you heat it up, it comes right off. But why do a step if you don't have to, if you can just prevent it with painter's tape. So highly easy, recommend it. And then you can see there that the lights just go right through that hole and I hope that kind of all makes sense now um, why that peg sticks out in how we kind of bring the lights into the haunted house. I will link the fairy lights down in the description below, but these are really cool because they are a purple and orange light. But what I do is I just string the um, battery pack um, all the way through. So I pull the lights all the way through that bottom and then you can just screw on the bottom and you can see there how it hides everything and you would never know that there is a battery pack hidden for the lights. So I turn the lights on so you guys can see this. But what I do is I just put the 
lights into the holes. So every haunted house comes like this. You just put the lights into the hole. So you're gonna fold it on itself and then you insert it into that hole and then just put a little bit of UV resin and it holds it into place. So just a little bit of UV resin. This is my favorite UV resin. I will list it down in the description below. It is the same thing as the Paduo that I had mentioned um, on a, a couple of the previous. It's just their, um, on a couple of their previous tutorials, it's just their sister brand under a different label. But there you can really see how I fold the LED lights on themselves and then you just kind of insert them like that. So you just pop it right into the hole and do a little bit of UV resin and they're in a good spot. Now these two bottom that you see, so this is the top, the two purple lights, I did not put them into the um, tumbler charm enough. So behind the door is a little darker than I would like. So make sure to push those in just a little bit further than the other lights so that you get nice light behind the door. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of come in there. And also I want to add this caveat, the glitter that we had done on the um, house, I actually did the roof shingles with um, purple glitter. It's Belieber from PGL of Glitters. I used the same techniques that we had done before um, with just kind of painting the shingles and adding the glitter. I don't know why I didn't record that, um, but that was really nice. But then after all the glitter on the haunted house was done, I spray sealed it twice so that I could lay it down like this and not have the glitter come off because that's the last thing you want is all the hard work that you put in glittering the house to come off when you lay it down and insert the lights. So again, I'm just making my way around, um, alternating the colors. So I was really intentional with where I put the lights. I wanted to kind of alternate between purple and orange. So if it was a window underneath was orange, I tried to do purple on top. Um, and it's easier to kind of see what they are on the front of the house. So if you need to turn it over, you can. Um, but that's what I'm really trying to do. So again, so orange is in the middle right here, like you see, and then I did purple on the two outsides. So that way it kind of had a little bit of consistency with the lights, but you could absolutely do whatever you want. Um, also, you do not have to use these purple and orange lights. If there are other colors you want, by all means, you can use them. This um, tumbler charm, like the Haunted House tumbler charm is pretty universal, so you can use them with anything that you would want or any lights that you find. You just wanna make sure that the battery pack is about the same size as the one with these lights, which is pretty standard. So that way you're easily able to hide it in the battery pack underneath. So once I'm done kind of placing all of these lights in their place, we are going to attach this to um, the cup. Now. I am going to, well, I'm not, Nick cuts this. So um, there's actually a pretty funny TikTok and stuff going around of me scaring him pretty bad. But I'm gonna cut it and that way I don't need any of the excess lights in there. Now, the only thing that could short out the lights is if these two ends touch with the lights turned on. So I'm just going to take one end, UV resin them down, just like that. And then I'm gonna take the other end in a completely different section and UV resin that down so that those ends never touch and the lights will last for a very long time. So you really wanna make sure to do that if you decide to cut them off. Otherwise, there's plenty of room just to kind of wind up the other lights and just stick them in the back of this house. So all the lights are attached, they're working nicely. And then what I'm going to do is stand it up and then on the bottom of the, like the haunted house, there is a little section that you can see there that slides on that peg. So I'm did just like a little bit of a test fit. And then I'm going to just lean the haunted house forward just the slightest bit <laughs> using a um, glitter shaker and a coffee mug to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna use that same Loctite super glue and just add the littlest a bit to the haunted house. So this is just going to keep the haunted house in place while we add our final coats of epoxy. So you can see there that I just put a little bit down and then fold it onto my cup. Now, for some reason, if your um, haunted house doesn't fit the tumbler that you're using, my biggest hack is I take a piece of um, sandpaper, just like a regular piece of sandpaper with the rough edge up, and then you put the haunted house on top of it and you can just rub it back and forth on top of your tumbler and it will sand it however you need it to, to fit on your cut perfectly and so I hope that makes sense um, but don't be afraid to sand your haunted house if you need to if there's any places that it's not fitting correctly um, this one just laid down really nicely so I didn't need to do any sanding so it worked out great 
Now what I'm doing is because there is a void behind these windows to make it spooky and kind of give that look, I am taking my UV resin and I forgot to buy the black precision tip bottles. So this took me a little bit longer, but I am just squirting a little bit into the windows. And what you can see is actually how different it looks when you add the UV resin into the windows. It actually makes it a lot brighter with the lighting. Cause you can see that window compared to the orange window on the left, it's a lot different. You could also add um, glow powders to these if you wanted to. Um, you could add glitter to the windows, whatever you would like, but we do want to fill them with either UV resin or epoxy resin. So that way when you're epoxying the whole tumbler, you don't get a bunch of bubbles in the windows or just a kind uh, any opportunity for wonkiness you've worked this hard on this tumbler you don't want any room for air so i'm just taking my time i'm um, just squeezing a little bit in letting it kind of fall like that and then i just hit it with my uv light i will link my uv light down in the description below because i absolutely love that thing um it's one of my favorite tools to use but i did get a couple of bubbles here so i'm just using my um precision tip like q-tip and i don't even know what they're called and just kind of popping any of those bubbles and smoothing them out and then hitting it with the light again so i'm just going to move around and do all of the windows until it's done and then it's time to apply our bats so you do want to make sure that your bats are spray sealed before you move into the step but i am just going to give the tumbler a light sanding and First, we're gonna start with the moon. And I know I said the bats, but you wanna add the moon just so you know where to place the bats. So I'm just going to use a cap. This is actually um, either an, uh, some kind of bottle cap. I just had it sitting around. And I'm going to roughly add just white acrylic paint. And the reason why I'm doing it rough is because the moon is rough. It's not perfect. But this is my favorite way to kind of get that moon on my tumblers. So I'm just gonna kind of place it on the cup and then rock it back and forth to give me that circle look. So you can see I got a nice, pretty nice I have to fix just a little bit right there but I've got a moon to kind of work as my template now and it gives me that little bit of texture that I like so I'm just going to fill it in with the same brush that we applied the paint to the cap and then once I'm happy with how it's filled in I grab silk um, another glitter from peachy olive glitters and I just apply it directly on to the acrylic paint so again I got my texture and then just come in and just hit it with this beautiful opal white and then it just kind of it keeps the the texture of the moon like you can see there um, but just gives it that little bit of pretty sparkle so now that the the moon is all applied I'm gonna grab again my little Loctite super glue just a little bit and just push the bats on to the cup now this goes really quickly but you do want to hold them in place until you feel I don't know how to explain it but like the glue will start to grip um, so you just want to hold it there otherwise they will move on you but again you only need the littlest bit and i'm just kind of applying my bats every wish which way to the cup now you could wait to um and glitter them and everything and then bend them once you knew where they were um that's what happened to me because i didn't want them in the exact same place so all i'm doing is heating up the bats and then i'm just going to use my fingers and push them down just to mold them to the tumbler a little bit more because if you bend them one way and it's not how you want it it's not going to fit but don't worry you can always bend them some more when you're ready so again just getting some super glue on and then I wanted it right there underneath the moon um, and then I think I bent this one yep a little bit more as well just to make sure that I got the placement that I wanted and then I let this um, so I'll heat it up push it down let the paint and everything dry and then um, it went into epoxy. I didn't spray seal this because the uh, silk really adhered well to that acrylic um, paint. So here I really wanted to spend some time showing you how to epoxy the house. So when I start to epoxy the house, I have my turner turned off. So I have the house facing up. And again, this has been spray sealed, but I know it looks sped up, but I did not do this quickly. I'm just making sure to put a light coat of epoxy on the roof. And you can see how I did the roof there with the purple glitter. Um, again, it was Belieber, but I'm just making sure to do a super thin coat of epoxy 
over the entire surface of the house before I turn my turner on. What this does is it prevents any kind of pooling in that could take away from the overall look of the house. So once I have that all kind of coated, then I'm going to move in to the rest of the tumbler. So this first time, um, I wanna say I used maybe about 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy. It didn't take as much as you might think, um, but I am just coming in and just covering the whole surface of the tumbler. So you do want to do this without the bottom of the battery pack on, and I I did uh, tape the battery pack to the bottom of this tumbler. I should have taped the bottom of the battery pack itself. Um, and then I moved in with three final coats of epoxy and this baby was done. I loved how this tumbler turned out and I feel like the tumbler charms let people add 3D elements to their tumblers who don't really feel like confident or comfortable in their sculpting abilities. And I'm so excited to see what you guys can create with these new types of tools. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. Oh my gosh, it closed. It's so freaking pretty. I love it. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cut making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.